of you who unfortunately can't be here in person, thank you for tuning in virtually for the send-off ceremony for detachment one. It's, this is a bit unusual. This unit's deployed several times before, last time to Afghanistan from 2010 to 11. Every other time we've done a send-off ceremony, uh, the ceremony was, was a time for families, friends, and, and community leaders to witness in person <laughs> the cer ceremonial departure of this fine unit. This time, soldiers have already said their goodbyes in person uh, to families and friends. And so th this time is a little bit different, but it's no less important. It's no less significant. As have many others across the world and in many different types of activities, we found a way to do this virtually so that we can continue this important tradition of recognizing the soldiers' departure from their families, friends, and communities to conduct their mission. It's a healthy transition activity for everyone involved. You've conducted significant pre-mobilization training, some of it even virtually here in the past few months. You are well prepared to move past or to move on to the next step of post-mobilization training. At Fort Sill, you will continue both individual training and training collectively as a unit. You will continue to hone your skills in shooting, moving, communicating, and sustaining. You will strengthen bonds with your brothers and sisters. You will deepen your trust in each other, and you will continue to gel as a unit. While we shielded this unit from COVID response operations for the past several months because you were preparing for a federal mission, your brothers and sisters in uniform elsewhere in the brigade and throughout the state have been working very hard to augment the state of Iowa's response to COVID-19. A few of you may have even augmented other units' efforts, and your detachment commander, as we were talking on the way here, actually uh, was working at the state level. That's one of the unique attributes that makes the National Guard such an effective resource. You were prepared to assist at the state and local level and your, uh, and your fellow mem members of your community in, in a time of need. And now you're prepared to transition to federal service to perform missions overseas that are vital to U.S. national interests. The Army National Guard never takes a day off. We are always where we need to be, when we need to be there, doing the things that our leaders know need to be done for our state and nation. Our motto is reality. Always ready, always there. You are uniquely qualified and trained to perform these duties. You selflessly volunteer to raise your right hand and serve, to serve your country, your state, and your community. You wanted to be a part of something big, something important. This is one of those important things. The Army converted you from civilian to soldier, and then you figured out how to be both. You balance your civilian occupation or education, military service, and family. You transition frequently from employee or student to soldier, to spouse, to father, and then back to employee or student. You maintain your physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual fitness to serve. For the next several months, you'll focus on being a soldier and accomplishing your mission. You'll focus on service, which is inherently selfless. Service is not for oneself, and it's not about oneself. You're serving your country, doing the critical things our nation needs people with your training and expertise to do. As you serve, live by the Army values. Loyalty, duty, respect, selfless service, honor, integrity, and personal courage. These are the values that are the foundation of our service to our nation, state, and communities. It takes a loyal, dutiful, respectful, selfless, honorable, and courageous person with integrity to be a soldier. Do what is right. Maintain your honor. Live up to the fine traditions and historical precedent of your unit, your battalion, the brigade, and the Iowa Army National Guard. Take care of each other. 
Maintain contact with your family and friends back home as your mission allows. Make an effort to improve yourself in some way. Learn more about your duties. Become a better soldier. Improve your physical fitness. Practice your religion. Or work on a college degree as time allows. Deployments can be a time of great personal and professional growth. And I encourage you all to take advantage of that. To the families, although you may not be donning a military uniform over the next year or so, we appreciate your service as well. Separation from a spouse or parent during a deployment is difficult for most families. We recognize and appreciate the sacrifice that families make while a soldier is serving. I encourage families to maintain contact with their soldier as the mission allows. Consider connecting with families of other deploying soldiers and consider reaching out to the family readiness group. The Family Readiness Group can be invaluable in connecting family members with resources as needs arise. Finally, I'd like to say that I am very proud of the team that we've assembled here in the 1st Battalion, 194th Field Artillery in preparation for this deployment. The soldiers are well prepared and I'm confident that we have the right leaders in place. I fully trust these leaders to balance the ultimate dichotomy of leadership. Mission first and people always. So leaders, accomplish your mission and take care of your soldiers. Farewell for now, Detachment 1 HHB, the leadership of the Iowa National Guard, and I wish you well. We look forward to welcoming, welcoming you back on completion of this important mission when ready. Dear Lord, we pray that your guiding hand will be upon the soldiers in their leadership support structure and their deployment. We specifically pray for confidence in the battlefield and in their training. We pray for clarity of decisions when they need to be made in whatever situation they might need to be made in. We pray for the patience and peace for the families and their support units that are left back here at home. We pray for a overall successful deployment and we pray for a safe return and integration back into their lives as students, soldiers, employees, family members, fathers, sons. Lord, we just pray that your hand be with everyone involved in this deployment. In your name. One of my earlier trips into Iraq, early 2003, in fact it was, um, one of the visits we made was to the 1st Armored Division there in Northern part of Baghdad, which was commanded by General Martin Dempsey, a one-star at the time. And uh, there happened to have been a mortar attack that distracted him, and so when he came in the room to brief about a dozen members of Congress, uh, we did the introductions on the way out rather than on the way in, which would be the normal case. And so uh, he gave us that talk, and uh, it was good to hear. I didn't know he was going to later on be the chairman of the Joint Chiefs, uh, but he did ascend to that, to that particular position and put a lot more stars on him in the process. But when that meeting was over, as we found out, there were about 10 or a dozen members of Congress there from all across the country. And uh, as we filed through, it was a short handshake, short handshake, and I just introduced myself, and I said, Steve King, I and he grabbed my hand, locked it down, pulled it towards him, and he said, keep sending me those good Iowa kids. And I'll tell you that, that memory sticks in my mind and it will the rest of my life. But that's a memory that you've all earned, that your predecessors have earned, and that you will be earning and are earning this day. Wherever Iowans go, first your Americans, and wherever Americans go, that carries an extra amount of credibility, an extra amount of respect all around the world, whether they like to admit it or not. But then when you're in Iowa as an American, I understand there are Minnesotans here too, by the way, wherever that little border might have gotten settled, the difference is only just the label time. But we're part of the heartland, but we're Midwesterners. And our predecessors came here across the prairie to live free or die. I guess that's New Hampshire's motto, not Iowa's, but they're telling the same to me. And uh, from that stock, that hardy stock, we are descended. And the people that came after also picked up that same culture and that same set of values. And so in Iowa, and here in the upper Midwest, we know how to get things done. 
We know how to delay our gratification in order to plan for the longer term of the future, to plant seeds and harvest them later. And all of these things are happening in the mission that you're about to go to as well. And when I look at what Iraq was like in those earliest days, when Saddam was ranging across the countryside and nobody could find him, and um, the surge began as well, I happened to, um, I have to review some troops in Mosul in uh, May of 2003, and we just liberated that area in March. General Treas was commanding uh, the 101st there, and uh, he had mustered up Iraqi troops, and they, about 10.30 at night, and they were all lined up for a review, and uh, you're more squared away than they ever were, I can tell that just watching you walk in here. And uh, the squared away people going into that part of the country set a standard. You're not only soldiers, you're ambassadors as well. And the interaction that you have with the people in that country, tell them what America is like, and it transfers our values to them. Every interaction that you have is transfers some of our values to them. And whenever that happens, they have a better chance of having a better future, which is one of the reasons why you're there. The other reason, there are several, another one is uh, to block the kind of tyranny and terrorism that has been emanating from that part of the world. And we say we've defeated ISIS. Well, you might say that, but I guess I'll say I believe that's true, but they're not, ex they're, they're, not, uh, they're not exterminated completely yet. Uh, they're not extinct is a more important word for that. And we know the Iranians want to connect that crescent all the way across over into Syria. And if that ever happens, it goes poorly for all the rest of the free world. And we are the leaders of the free world. Our values, our culture, our rule of law, our history, and our history follows along in our military history. And if you look back throughout this history and you see that um, the Revolutionary War and the sacrifice they made, Valley Forge and many others, and uh, the strategy that brought Yorktown in the end, the conflict of the Civil War, the Spanish-American War, made America a global power. And then we, were, we went into the First World War and uh, made the difference there. And you're part of that legacy, and you're carrying that legacy along. And I see that Red Bull on your couch. And you all know a lot of the history of the Red Bull Division and uh, the, the price that was paid by some of your predecessors of the war also that came with that and the honor that's part of it. And this America that we have today would not exist if it had not been for the type of sacrifices that you all are making here to stay. And so I do pay attention to history and it's, um, I'm continually moved by the sacrifices that are made and the selfless sacrifices. And I also think of some of these vignettes that pop into my mind sitting in an airport and I wonder why are these people here at the gate in Omaha um, that don't seem to have tickets. It doesn't look like they're flying out to me. And I've got a little seven-month-old girl there with a well-rested pink with a pink headband and not a lot of hair to show that she's a girl. But when those guardsmen get off that plane, then I know why they're there. And when I see the rolling standing ovation through the airport of gratitude for the service that you are providing and are about to provide, that tells me that America has come out of the doldrums of the Vietnam War at the time when we didn't welcome, welcome our troops home. And now, we do respect and appreciate and honor all that you do. And if there's a day that goes by that that doesn't get said to you, um, don't forget, our prayers are with you. Our prayers are with you each day. And I so much appreciate the families that are, that are there that are supporting you that will hold on to all of this and make sure that the children that are going to grow a few inches by the time you get back home again, know about the man. And the legacy that you're leaving will be passed down through the generations as well. Each of these deployments will be talked about by your grandchildren, and perhaps your great-grandchildren, just the deployments themselves, regardless of what else happens. So I will keep you in my prayers, and I, I pray you all come back safe and sound, and I pray that your families can be strong and confident and faithful and prayerful for all of you. And I know that you will do honor to this island legacy and this upper Midwestern work ethic, the values and the culture. And I appreciate it also so much about the discussion about keeping your spiritual lives together as well. Uh, so thank you for serving America. God bless you. Be safe. I was asked to give you an idea of what to expect. Well, the army has changed since I was in. So all I can do is give you an idea of what I experienced. As veterans, you are leaving home for an unknown adventure. 
We love our country enough to defend it and protect it with our lives. You are saying goodbye to friends, family, and everything that we know. You have learned the basics, and now when we travel into the park corners of the excuse me, up here, you will find new friends and will become brothers and sisters regardless of color, race, or creed. You will have good times, and you'll have plenty of bad times. There will be times when you don't get enough sleep. You might smoke too much, drink too much. You will pick up both good and bad habits, and you won't earn great rage. You will experience the happiness of mail calling, or in each case, cell phone calls, and the sadness of missing important events. You will fight for our freedom as well as freedoms of others, and you will sometimes wonder why. Some of you will see actual combat in a world completely new, experience, and deal with things that you can't fully describe or explain. As not all of your sacrifices will be visible. You will participate in time honored ceremonies and rituals with each other, strengthening your bonds and camaraderie. I have bonds that are so close to the men that I served with that they are stronger than the bonds of my own family. You will share an unspoken bond with each other that most people don't experience and few will understand. You will count on each other to get the job done and sometimes just to survive it at all. You'll deal with victories, tragedies, celebrations, and more. When your adventure is over, you will come back home. But you will be a changed man. Do not be afraid or ashamed to ask for help. Both you and your families will need time to readjust. You have been through a lot, and so have you, <coughs> so have they. You will have amazing and hilarious stories of your exploits and adventures to tell. I remember being pinned down behind a rice paddy guy. We had a new guy between us, and we were sprayed with rounds over our head. The new guy replied, they're using live ammunition. My partner replied, yeah, they play for keeps over here. Being a veteran is something that has to be earned. It can never be taken away. It has no monetary value, but at the same time, it is a priceless gift. People now see the better and they thank you for their service. We see each other, we give that little nod for a slight smile, knowing that we have shared and experienced things that most people never will. I have been asked to relate to you what to expect when you are employed. I have four things that I would like you to remember. When I was in your shoes in World War II, that told me, I feel like a dinosaur, as your war is so different than the one that I fought. His first point was, keep your mouth shut but ask questions. There's no such thing as a dumb question when it comes to your life. Keep your eyes open. Listen to everything that's being said. And learn from your experience. They don't call them short times or not. So for me, rest of you veterans out there, I commend and thank you for all that you have done and are about to sacrifice for your country. Try to remember the good times and forget the bad ones. 
share your stories. But most importantly, stand tall and proud that you have earned the right to go with it. May our Lord and Savior send all of his guardian angels down to the path and protect you on your deployment. And may God bless you in this country.